Hi class, welcome to Sports Nutrition. My name is Renata Korzak. Please feel free to call me Renee and I'll be the instructor for this course. This is the very first lecture for the semester and it's titled Nutrition 101, Understanding the Basics of Food. I created this lecture to provide each of you with some nutrition basics and really a foundation for this course before we jump into sports nutrition uh, specific topics. Um, so as you can see, this lecture does not really correspond to a chapter in your textbook. It's really just to get all of us on the same page since each of us come from various backgrounds. So let's get started. The objectives, objectives excuse me, for this lesson are to define nutrition, carbohydrates, protein, lipids, vitamins, minerals, and water. Describe the main functions of carbohydrates, protein, fats, vitamins, minerals, and water. Identify and apply the physiological fuel value of each of these nutrients. And list foods that are sources of carbs, protein, and fat. What is nutrition? Uh, when I was first ta taught nutrition as an undergraduate, it was most simply defined as the science of food. And really it's a complicated science, so I don't wanna scare any of you away, but it does draw on many different fields, including biology, chemistry, uh, physiology, certainly food science, and much, much more. Uh, and why do I enjoy nutrition or what does it mean to me? I think it really helps us to understand the relationship between health and disease. If any of you carry on in your careers and go into grad school, you may study a field known as epidemiology, and that's where you collect data and really try to understand what people are eating and how that may increase or decrease their risk for disease uh, in the future. So it's really a fun science and I hope um, each of you enjoy this course. So now we know what nutrition is. Um, so more simply, what is a nutrient? Well, a nutrient is defined as a substance that's essential to health, that the body can't make or that it makes in quantities that's too small to support health. So what, when you think of like what qualifies as an essential nutrient, well, three main things. Uh, so an essential nutrient has to have a specific biological function. So for example, carbohydrates. One of the main functions of carbohydrates is to break down into glucose and provide energy to all cells in our body. Uh, second, when we remove an essential nutrient from our diet, we can decline in function. So later on in the semester, we'll learn about vitamin and mineral deficiency. So for example, if you were deficient in something like folic acid, uh, you may experience a decline in mental function. If you were uh, someone who was pregnant, that certainly can affect the health of your baby. And finally, when we add the nutrient back to our diet, that restores normal biological function. So those are three characteristics that defines uh, a nutrient as essential. Really important to remember that. So when I think about essential nutrients in the human diet, there are really six that you need to know. The first three, carbohydrates, protein, and fat, uh, these are termed macronutrients. That's because we need these three nutrients in the largest quantities in our diet. What's interesting about these three nutrients is that they produce energy in the form of calories. Vitamins, minerals, and water are the three other essential nutrients needed in the human diet. Um, and these we need in smaller amounts. So they're often, um, vitamins and minerals specifically are often defined as micronutrients. Vitamins and minerals, also water, are non-energy yielding nutrients, meaning that they don't provide us with calories. That's different from carbs, protein, and fat. But collectively, all six of these are uh, essential nutrients, meaning we need them in the human diet every single day. Macronutrients, as I mentioned, that includes carbs, protein, fat, um, are needed in larger amounts in the diet. Micronutrients, including vitamins and minerals, are needed in smaller quantities. As you can see on this slide, I've starred water. Uh, so I want you to think about that a little bit. Water is actually a macronutrient. Most people forget about water and kind of overlook it. Uh, but interestingly, without water, you would die. <laughs> uh, your body's able to go through a little bit of starvation and draw on your fat stores. Um, but without water, we would certainly not survive. So that is why it falls under that category of macronutrients. So now I want to spend some time introducing each of these main uh, essential nutrients to you. Again, this is just an overview and we will certainly get more in depth as we get into uh, this course. So the first is carbohydrates. 
So carbohydrates, when we look at the structure of them and the elements in carbohydrates, they're really composed of three. Uh, this includes carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Uh, you probably learned this in chemistry or uh, organic chemistry, but those are the main elements in carbohydrates. Uh, and they give us calories. That's why it's termed a macronutrient because it provides four calories uh, per gram. And we'll look at a food label later to understand how we can figure out how many calories are coming from carbohydrates. One of the main functions of carbohydrates is to, is to provide energy, excuse me, in the form of glucose. And carbohydrates, when you really get to understand what foods contain carbohydrates and how they're further classified, um, really in two ways. You can have simple carbohydrates or complex carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates include uh, sugars called monosaccharides and disaccharides. Mono meaning one, so I think of it as one sugar. Uh, there's three of them, glucose, fructose, and galactose. Disaccharides, dying meaning two, means that there's two sugar units linked together. So the three disaccharides to know are sucrose, maltose, and lactose. Complex carbohydrates, on the other hand, are a little bit different. So remember this is another category of carbohydrates. This includes fiber, which I studied actually extensively in grad school, and starch. So here's a picture. I took this actually from one of my um, old textbooks from grad school. I really like it a lot because it kind of just shows you the difference between uh, simple and complex carbohydrates. And what you'll notice from these different shapes that are um, shown on the slide is just a pictorial representation of how they, they look um, on a smaller level. So simple carbohydrates here, you can see that there's different sugar units that are just linked together. Complex carbohydrates, notice how the shape there branches. Uh, there's many units kind of linked together and that's what makes them so complex. Okay, so carbohydrates, maybe you know this already, maybe you don't, but what are some foods that are sources of carbohydrates? Well, really they're kind of all over the place. Um, we get carbohydrates from fruits, including your citrus fruits, um, things like pears, oranges, berries, uh, vegetables. So pretty much any type of vegetable would count for a carbohydrate. Uh, grains, this includes rice, pasta, bread, cereal, and beans. Uh, beans actually do contain carbohydrates in the form of fiber. The interesting part about beans is they also contain some protein. So if someone says, no, beans are not just a source of carbohydrate, they also contain protein, uh, they're correct. Beans kind of fall into this food group where it contains a little bit of protein and a little bit of carb. So as you can see, carbohydrates are pretty abundant um, in our food supply. Protein. So now we're moving on to the second macronutrient. Protein, uh, when you look at it structurally, it contains carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. I bolded nitrogen because that's different um, from what I just taught you about carbohydrates. This group is, is different compared to carbs and what we'll learn about fat. Protein I often think about as a really dynamic nutrient because it does so much for us in the body. So some of the main functions I've listed here is that protein is a main structural part of the body. It's a component of pretty much everything. Uh, your blood cells, your cell membranes, any enzymes, um, immune factors, muscle, and bone. Protein also gives us energy in the form of calories, and similar to carbohydrates, protein provides us with four calories per gram, and proteins are formed from amino acids. Amino acids are really those building blocks that we're gonna learn more about, and proteins are formed when we link these amino acids together. So here's a picture of an individual amino acid. <laughs> I learned by picture, so I think it's really important to show these to you as well. So you can see um, this purple dot kind of indicated with an N, that's your nitrogen. Um, and collectively that's called an amine group. On the far right of the slide, you can see your carboxylic acid group. You can see those uh, red kind of dots there. And then the center is your backbone and you see a side chain called R. So that R is pretty important. That's known as your side chain. And that actually indicates the function of that individual amino acid. So hopefully this is just a review for you on basic um, kind of biology and or chemistry. How many amino acids do we need to function? Well, actually there's 20 of them in total. 
uh, and those are actually further subdivided. So of those 20 amino acids, nine amino acids are called essential. Uh, your textbook may also refer to them as indispensable. Those terms are used pretty much interchangeably. So I listed both. Um, I like to say essential because I just think it's easier. Uh, so what does that mean? Essential amino acids are pretty interesting actually because our body does not make those. We have to make sure we get essential amino acids from our diet every single day. The other 11 are non-essential or dispensable. Uh, so those actually are pretty unique because our body can make those. So we have to make sure that throughout the course of our diet, we're kind of getting all 20 of those amino acids in order to make sure we have an available supply of those amino acids in our body. I also have a basic picture here just to show you again, the basics of protein. Uh, protein, as I mentioned, composed of those individual amino acids, and they link together uh, through a peptide bond and eventually kind of uh, coil together and form a, a protein. What are food sources of protein? Protein, like carbohydrates, are uh, pretty abundant in our food supply. Uh, so we find protein in pretty much all types of meat, whether it's red meat or pork. Uh, certainly chicken is a great source of protein. Uh, any type of fish. Uh, dairy is a great source of protein. So when I think about dairy, I think about milk, cheese, yogurt, uh, kefir, things that are not even on this slide uh, could count as long as it's falling in that dairy category. Legumes, when I say legumes, I refer to pretty much beans. So think about chickpeas, black beans, kidney beans, those kind of all fall in the legume family. Nuts, almonds, walnuts, pecans, pretty much anything in that family, and whole grains. So things like quinoa, buckwheat, amaranth, uh, and so on. All of those are great sources of protein. Okay, we're on to our last um, macronutrient here, fat. So fat, um, really like fat is a broad term, um, but again, this is a, a basic lecture. We'll dive more specifically into fat, but fat really refers to lipids, oil, and cholesterol. And at the structural level, it's really similar to carbohydrates. So it's composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Fat does a lot for us. It does give us energy, a pretty dense source of energy. So nine calories per gram, which is the highest compared to um, the three macronutrients I've taught you about today. Fat insulates and protects the body. So when you think about your organs, like your heart, your liver, your brain, uh, fat really does its job and makes sure all those organs are protected. And it also aids in fat soluble vitamin absorption and transport. Okay, I thought I'd kind of just break down some of the, the fats um, that really we're gonna focus on in this course. Uh, one of the main sources of fat in our diet come from triglycerides. So triglycerides, we find this pretty much in 95% of the foods we eat. And structurally, this is what a triglyceride looks like. You see these three uh, individual fatty acids that are going across on this slide in the orange and blue. And those three fatty acids are connected to this blue, uh, what's known as a glycerol molecule. Uh, so just fun to kind of see what this looks like up close. What else do we know to need to know about fat? Well, maybe you've seen this in your own kitchen or maybe you've experimented with uh, fat in a science class, but there are some differences in the types of fat that we have in our diet. So the first and probably most common is saturated fat. Saturated fat, I think of something like butter. When you look at butter, it's solid at room temperature, right? Uh, unsaturated fat, on the other hand, I think of olive oil. So olive oil is liquid at room temperature and unsaturated fats, um, can be classified as like monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. So those are really fats that come from plant sources. And again, we'll focus more on that later in this course. Food sources of fat. Okay, so fat is also pretty abundant in our food supply. When I think about fat, it comes from butter, any kind of oils, margarine. Uh, if you ever ate a piece of salmon, you notice that salmon is kind of oily. Um, so salmon is you know, definitely would contain some fat, tuna as well. Any type of meat, whether it be beef, pork, lamb, um, milk would definitely contain fat, especially if you are drinking whole milk. 
on eggs. Eggs definitely contain fat, and you can see on this slide I pictured an egg yolk kind of cut in half, so the yellow part of the egg is where all the fat lies. Um, and then nuts and flaxseed. Um, I'm sure there's more foods that contain fat. This is kind of just um, a broad list here. Okay, so we've gone through the three main macronutrients, carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Now we're gonna focus on some of those micronutrients, first of which are vitamins. So vitamins, I think sometimes this is a confusing topic because um, if you look at the definition of a vitamin, it's an organic compound with no caloric value uh, that helps in metabolic processes. Uh, what does that really mean? Well, vitamins do not give us energy in the form of calories, right? Uh, carbs, protein, and fat definitely do, but vitamins really help when it comes to breaking down um, food through digestion and absorption and serving uh, as what's known as cofactors and all these really complicated metabolic processes, which we're not really gonna cover um, in this class, but hopefully you guys know a little bit about that already. Class, or I'm sorry, vitamins are also subdivided into two different classes. Uh, so there's a lot of vitamins out there. Um, one is the fat-soluble vitamins, and there's really four of them to know. Vitamins A, D, E, and K are fat-soluble. Water-soluble vitamins, there's a lot more of those. Uh, that includes vitamin C and all of the B vitamins. Uh, so I've listed the B vitamins on the bottom here. I'm not gonna read through them. Um, but if you've ever gone into GNC or a grocery store or a pharmacy and you've bought in a B complex vitamin supplement, um, this is what you're really getting. You're getting thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, so on and so forth. All of those B vitamins are in a B complex supplement. So hopefully uh, that makes sense. Okay, moving on to our other micronutrient, which is a mineral. Uh, the technical definition of a mineral is an inorganic element needed in really small amounts in the diet for the normal function, growth, and maintenance of body tissues. Minerals cannot be made in the body, so we do have to obtain um, this from the diet. And again, just like everything else I've taught you about today, this is further subdivided. Uh, so there's major minerals and trace minerals. So major minerals, you need um, 100 milligrams or more of those every single day. So the types of major minerals, um, probably all of you are familiar with sodium, uh, potassium, chloride, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and sulfur. And then we have trace minerals. Trace minerals we actually need in much smaller quantities from our diet, uh, so that's less than 100 milligrams daily. Examples are iron, zinc, copper, selenium, manganese, fluoride, iodine, chromium, and molyb molybdenum. <laughs> I've always had a hard time saying molybdenum. I think it's because we don't hear so much about this trace mineral, um, and certainly we need this in pretty small quantities. Okay, and last but certainly not least is water. So remember, water is actually a macronutrient, and I feel like it's often overlooked, um, but really we need water more than any other nutrient. Uh, thankfully, we get it from, of course, just a glass of tap water or bottled water, but we also get it from fruits and vegetables. Think about biting into a piece of watermelon. There's actually a lot of water in that fruit. Uh, same thing with other vegetables like broccoli, kale, etc. Um, so if you're not hitting the recommended amount of water you need every single day, you're certainly getting a little bit from fruits and vegetables as well. Water does a lot for us. Uh, some of the main functions are to lubricate joints, regulate body temperature, carry nutrients and oxygens to all cells in our body, and then flush out waste products. Okay, so you'll learn um, in this course, I really like to finish each lecture with a practice problem. I think it's important to kind of give you some critical thinking or practical application problems, and this will help prep you for your weekly quiz and your weekly um, practice questions that I'll post on Moodle. So this one is pretty basic, um, but hopefully it kind of combines everything I've taught you today about macro and micronutrients. Um, so build a meal that includes at least one food from each of the main macronutrients, including carbohydrates, protein, and fat. So you can think about that for a little bit, and then I'll show you some of my own answers. Um, so the first one, this is actually what I had for breakfast about a week ago. <laughs> so this is French toast with berries and some lean sausage. So the protein and fat here would come from the pork sausage. So remember, foods are complicated and complex. Uh, sometimes they contain more than one nutrient, right? So that's why the pork sausage, it contains some protein and some fat. 
Um, and then the carbohydrates would come from the bread itself, uh, the base of the French toast, right? And then berries, which would be a fruit and also give you some carbohydrate. Another thing I had for dinner, um, I'm a bit of a chef, so hopefully you don't mind if I use my own food photos. Um, the carbohydrates in this picture would come from the barley, which is that kind of brown grain at the base of the plate, and the vegetables. So there's some cucumber and tomato and some sauteed mushrooms. Uh, the protein would come from the chicken breast. And the fat, you can't really see here, but there was some olive oil to cook the, the chicken, so that's an oil. And then there's some full fat yogurt that's um, that white kind of sauce covering the top of the barley. So your answers would vary on this type of practice problem because we eat all different types of foods, but hopefully it just puts some of this information into practice. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.